Mmm, soft and creamy. Avocados are one of the representative fruits of Central and South America. The word avocado actually originates from the word ayuacatl, which means male testicle. The fruit does, in fact, resemble the shape of a male testicle. And now, naming aside, what really sets the avocado apart is the huge seed nestled in its center. Seeds are the links between generations of plants. Dandelion seeds sail the airways, Spanish seeds ride on animals, and a lot of seeds ride in animals too. Likewise, for avocados to spread, they would need animals that feed on their fruit and then travel around to spread their seeds. But curiously, in the tropical forests of Central and South America, there are virtually no avocado seed spreaders. Occasionally, jaguars have been observed eating avocados, and the agouti sometimes eats the flesh of the avocado before burying the seed, but these are not common occurrences. So how in the world did avocados spread their seeds hundreds of thousands of years ago and avoid extinction along the way? Let's find out. In 1982, American botanist Daniel Jansen and geologist Paul Martin proposed an interesting hypothesis that the avocado's giant seeds were spread by giant mammals that roamed Central and South America tens of thousands of years ago. The giant armadillos of the Galliptodont subfamily, Megatherium, the giant ground sloth, the descendant of South American Gomphotherium, Cuveronius, and the South American hooved mammal, Toxodon, could have easily eaten entire avocados, traveled far and wide with the seeds in their stomachs, and then released them into the wild, spreading the avocados and continuing their life cycle. And over time, as avocados co-evolved with these megafauna, their seeds may have grown larger. The bigger the seed, the more nutrients the plant has early on. So if the seed wound up in a particularly barren corner of the tropics, the extra nourishment would increase its odds of survival. But tragedy for the avocado. For some reason, large numbers of these megafauna began disappearing 10,000 years ago. In 2017, Dr. Alan Cooper of Australia theorized that when the Earth's temperature began to rise 10,000 years ago, Earth's glaciers began to melt, leading to a steep rise in humidity. Unable to adapt to the rapidly changing climate, these megafauna may have faced extinction. Also, the human intervention theory speculates that when humans entered the Americas, we began hunting these giant animals to extinction. However, we still aren't completely sure why these creatures disappeared. Whatever the cause, avocados lost their symbiotic partners and have been left alone to fend for themselves for the past 10,000 years. So the question is, how? How did avocados survive without their symbiotic partners for so long? Okay, so some of you may have already guessed, but there is one other organism that seems to covet avocados as much as the giants did, who would happen to be exploring the Americas all those years ago. But humans! For hungry humans, avocados would have been the ultimate nutritious meal. While lacking in sugar compared to other fruits, avocados are very rich in fat, with a smattering of protein to boot. And since not many other animals eat avocados, they would have been quite easy to find. For this reason, the indigenous people who settled in the Americas began to cultivate avocados, and in this way, avocados were able to avoid extinction and spread their goodness all over the world. Most species in co-evolutionary relationships would have gone extinct after losing their partners. Seeing this, science writer Connie Ballow wrote about the phenomenon, which is called evolutionary anachronism. She writes that avocados are not the only plants to have experienced this phenomenon, citing the ginkgo tree as another prime example. Ginkgo trees appeared during the Permian period of the Paleozoic era, and their seeds were spread by herbivorous dinosaurs and small mammals. But as all these animals are now extinct, the ginkgo tree maintains its lineage thanks to human cultural and decorative reasons. 
The same goes for Kentucky coffee trees growing in the Midwest. The fruit of this coffee tree is highly toxic, and the rind is so tough and thick that it prevents the seed from spreading naturally. Even small animals dare not touch these poisonous coffee berries. Tens of thousands of years ago, the fruit used to be spread by the American mastodon. This giant went extinct, however, and so the tree now relies on human cultivation to survive. Circling back to avocados, here's a paradox for you. The avocado, which would have already gone extinct if it weren't for humans, is now so popular it's having a negative impact on the Earth's ecosystem. First, as avocado exports increased, so did the amount of greenhouse gases generated during their transportation, contributing to global warming. In addition to having a high carbon footprint, avocados can reduce water accessibility. This is because a 100 meter by 100 meter avocado farm uses 100,000 liters of water per day, enough to provide for around 500 people. And in some locations in Mexico, existing forests are being chopped down to build plantations to increase avocado exports. The avocado, which would have gone extinct alongside the giants of the past, luckily survived thanks to humanity. The humans now love this fruit so much that we're destroying the Earth's ecosystem to grow more. Isn't that ironic? It's like being hungry and chewing on your own arm. Science is a window to the world. And this has been Science Dream. Thank you for watching.